We're now going to plot these cross sections with a spacing of 50 meters and we'll plot them to a PDF file. So we'll just maximize our section view and we can click on the printer icon and select cross plot. We already have a plot parameter file set up so we click on the folder icon, walk right on our user library, there'll be one there called 200906 sections. You can select that and click on read. We now need to load up what we're going to plot, so we select the view and it'll be view cross. When we select the view to plot, it will automatically load up the vertical exaggeration from that view. The horizontal scale is built into our plot parameter file and the model for the sections to plot will also be loaded from the view. We're going to plot it to an A3 sheet and we're going to plot it to a model and the model will be prefixed with preview XS. So we'll just plot that for the moment. You can see it created eight pages and if we create a new view and we just call it preview load that one up and we can turn on the model preview XS1. So to take a look at how this PPF works just very very briefly if we go to the title block you can see that we're using a title block and that title block has been loaded up from our user library. These values here were automatically filled in and stored as part of our PPF file and come next month we could simply change these dates and plot it again. The cross sections have been plotted every 50 meters but when we created the sections we created them every 10 meters. The way this is done is under the cross section filtering and you can see here that we're going to use cross section filtering and we'll filter them every 50 meters. If we take a look at these plots you'll notice that we have a small extension out to the right and to the left of our cross section and this is done under plot sheet layouts and left and right extensions. Directly under the plot sheet layouts you also have the margins and this is the left and right distances from your border into where the drawings will start and you can change this around to try and optimize the number of plots you get on this sheet. That goes hand in hand with the subplot gaps which is the distance between each plot. Also in the plot you'll notice that we've labelled a tin called May 2009 surface and this is the heights of the tin. If we go into our boxes centerline here under common parameters you'll see we have one called tins to label and that's the 20905. To actually label it we have to go under boxes, tins title values and you'll notice that we use set number one so this is defined as set number one under here we use set number one, we draw the tin, we draw it green and we label it. So there it is drawn in green and then we're going to label it. To label it we go under here, our title will be May 2009 surface on two lines. There's our tuck style, our colour and our size. The heights have their own values so they can have a different height for example and you'll notice that the decimal places is set to minus three which means that we get zero padding. If we just put three in here then this value would be 14.29. In our section view directly above the labeling of our tin we appear to have another tin however this is actually the primary string that was profiled and it happens to be that it, by the way we cut the sections they are actually heights on the tin so this is under the primary string text titles values so we have the title June 2009 surface and then we have the values down the bottom. The only other thing of interest on our cross section is the offsets and they are just simply controlled under offset title height so we have the title and then we have the values further down. Okay we're going to save this plot parameter file locally now 
so that we don't interfere with anything that's in the user library because it's quite often used company-wide. So any changes that we make to this, we want to save them locally and not back into our user library. So just delete this prefix of user library and click on Write. We now want to plot these sections out to a PDF file. So change your plotter type from Model to PDF Writer and click on Plot. You'll see the sections will be created down the bottom over here and they will be plotted to a PDF file.